What's up guys? Welcome back. If this is your first time clicking, thank you for doing so. Predominantly I have a sixth generation Camaro channel. It's not only a big fan of pretty much just Chevrolet across the board, but most importantly, I'm a big supporter of American brands altogether. I recently put up a poll, boom, and I was kind of asking, you know, fishing around, seeing what uh, my next move should be if I was going to move away from ZL1, being that the Corvette is going to continue on with a internal combustion engine and the... <laughs> Camaro, oh man. The Camaro is not. The Camaro is gonna go EV. It's cool because Chevrolet chose to go one route and I'm gonna choose to do another. Like I said, just kind of getting a feel for the way that I should go. And the response was kind of, you know, overwhelmingly so. Now when the post first came out, I saw the response and I let it you know, simmer for a couple days, almost a week. Over time, I saw how much voting and which way it went. The Z06, uh, I'm kind of entertaining myself too. We have yet to see the price of the different tiers structure, if they're gonna call it a 1LZ, 2LZ, 3LZ, whatever we're gonna do with this model of Z06. But I have reached out to my dealer and I did get some pricing, whatever the MSRP is going to be. Pretty much, I have, uh, I've waited in line. I put my name on the list actually since last year. So I've been waiting for my turn to actually just purchase a C8 and my number's up. So I reached out to my salesman. Uh, yet, I have yet to take delivery of my ZL1, but that doesn't matter because I can kind of order this now. It's gonna take a while before this thing gets here. So this is kind of, even why I'm making today's video is I want to kind of want to run through the pros and cons of what I should do, who I think this car for. I just want to throw my two cents out there. Maybe bring up some things that, you know, people should be thinking about if they're not. I have a feeling that this is going to be a love hate thing. Either you're already on board with it. You're going to buy it no matter what, and you're bought and sold and there's no talking you out of it, or you're bought and sold on it and you just haven't saved enough money yet or you hate it. And hey, it takes all kinds. And last year I produced a video that was like six reasons of why I think the sixth generation of Corvette could hit six figures soon. Uh, I'm not doing those videos anymore because I am not, I mean, there's a lot of cars I wanna buy and I'm not gonna contribute to the you know price increase or I'm not, it's not like anybody really is watching my, my channel for that that kind of content but they were just kind of fun to make and kind of bringing up points to you know just talk about and, and bring attention to but I am done with that I'm not making any more of those videos that's why I have not even brought up anything like that anymore so but I'm telling you the C8 if they actually roll out all the things and all the variants and all the models of this kind of Corvette this the eighth generation is going to be crazy because we have the LT2 uh, you know cross plane in a version now we're gonna have the LT6, and now they're rolling out kind of like the fastest per dollar car that you can get variant of the eighth generation Corvette. And that's the Z06 with the 5.5 flat plane, naturally aspirated V8. Now, there's a couple more models that I hear are in the works. If they do like a ZR1 or this E-Ray, and they actually do have a all electric, C8 come out and then we have a hybrid car. This platform is gonna be crazy. It's gonna have the most variant. I thought sixth generation with the LS2, LS3, LS7, and LS9 was crazy. This is gonna have every kind of powertrain we currently have available in the automotive world. So this car is gonna be pretty interesting to watch over the years as all the variants of this thing roll out. It's gonna be crazy. In my opinion, the, the C8 is an amazing car, especially starting at $60,000. This is crazy, and I know so many people have brought it up. $60,000, one LT, blah, blah, blah. 
that car is amazing. Uh, just simply because of the chassis you're gonna get, the engine, I mean, it is, forget the little interior goodies, which I don't think I could do. Uh, I think if you're gonna go that route, I think that needs to be like a serious track car or a car that you're really gonna butcher and cut up. Uh, I don't think, I think that if you're gonna buy like a road car, I think you at least, at least minimum need to go up to a 2LT. There's a lot of amenities that I have, especially with my 1SS, 1LE, that I think are kind of, man, you just, you don't want to go without. You, there's no going back on. C8 across the board, I think, um, with this E99 ECU, I think Chevrolet has absolutely neutered this car. They just absolutely gutted it. Um, I would actually love to own this car. The thing is, is if you can't tune it, man, you're you're creating a whole, this is a lot of headaches. And the Z06 isn't gonna be any different. I mean, across the board, these cars are not gonna be tunable. You can do a couple things to them. I know it's not just MoTeC that has developed a, kind of a piggyback system. Uh, the ECU will allow the factory parameters to take over uh, until like a certain power level and then the piggyback kind of shuts off the factory ECU and takes over. And I'm not sure if it's MoTeC that has this. There's a couple companies, but I know there's been a ton of companies that have pretty much almost went into bankruptcy trying to crack this ECU and trying to break the encryption on just you know trying to find a back door in order to tune this car that's gonna be a serious serious flaw to this car uh, I think that you know they're passing the code or the keys over to Callaway to make a couple of their own variants of this car that's cool. There are two ways that you can look at this. Either you can buy the car and be okay with it the way it is, or you can buy the car and eventually by the time you have the loan paid off, some aftermarket company is gonna step in and have this ECU cracked. It's gonna be cracked or it's gonna be affordable enough to be able to just have a plug and play system to where, to where you can actually tune this thing. Another kind of flaw or uh, it's kind of a deterrent away from me buying this car is the transmission and I know everybody's whining and bitched about uh, Not having a manual transmission available in this chassis and I you know what I'm okay with the DCT uh, I, I've kind of made peace with it. It's kind of a weak point in this and I've heard several people talking about this and You know once you get up seven eight hundred foot-pounds of torque in this car you're thinking that's the limitation of this transmission transmission. It is a unit built by Trimic, so I do have all the faith in the world that you can go back through and reinforce and build this transmission to hold, you know, pretty much all the power you want to throw at it. It's an additional cost of, you know, do you really want to spend that? Now the Z06, I've heard that it's going to be a low production car, tops 15,000 units per year. I know that they're, you know, supposedly set up to do 40, 45,000 units per year you think that's good being that you think that that's going to keep the numbers of this car low and it's going to keep it exclusive I don't think so it took Lamborghini Gallardo 10 years to reduce 14,022 cars and Corvette's gonna do that in one. I think that if everybody else is backing out of their Stingray allocations and moving it to a Z06 allocation, I think that 15,000 units per year is gonna go up. It only makes sense. I mean, they're in the business to make money and if Z06 is where the money's at, they're gonna make Z06s, period. If you're after a gas car of what you want to mod and you're looking for just the ultimate speed weapon, the Stingray is what you want. In the past, with the C7, the transmission, which is a transaxle, is in the rear, and then you're gonna have the motor in the front. Torque tube really doesn't weigh a whole lot. I mean, it weighs more, it weighs enough to be considered into the, uh, into the whole factor because everything matters, but you're gonna move, you're gonna eliminate the torque tube, you're gonna move the engine to the rear. So now all the weight is on the rear. I believe it now it's like a 60, 60, 40 split. I don't know, I'm not for sure. I'm sure there's some people out that have the poundage and everything just blah, 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 figured out, that's not me. Again, this is my opinion. 
Now that you have the entire drivetrain and most of the weight over the rear, torque is what you want. This is it. The cross plane crank V8 is what you want. You want torque. Torque is going to be your friend here because now you have the capability to put it to the ground, especially backed up with Chevrolet's PTM, which is their performance traction management system. It's the only way to go. Now, who is the Z06 for? Now, the Z06, if you're gonna make power and you can hear it in the launch control, flat plane cranks, they just, they don't have torque. They really lack in the torque department. That's why it has a ultra high red line even in the release they were saying that the power it comes on about 4 4500 rpm it goes all the way up to 8600 i believe it is crazy to believe that this is going to be the highest horsepower naturally aspirated motor put in any production well any american production automobile the lt6 engine is going to be which they have announced that this is going to be bespoke for this car and bespoke is nothing a fancy word i'll put it up here it's just a uh it's just a dressed up way of saying specifically for this engine sounds crazy it is amazing and this i think is what corvette needed probably like 10 years ago maybe 15 years ago i know that they've actually spent a lot of time uh modifying the exhaust tips to you know perfectly tune the resonance and the sound of this motor but man i'm gonna leave a link below i found another youtube channel that did a comparison between the ferrari 458 and the c8 z06 and i'm gonna tell you my initial thought after I completed watching the video was, you know what? I'm gonna let you find out for yourself. You tell me. I don't think that that Ferrari sounds or feels so special after that. It kind of feels like another average car. It took the wind out of the Ferrari sales and it really makes me wonder why everybody's paying so much for that car. The specialness of the 458, and when I was watching that video, it is gone. It's, that Z06 sounds amazing. Now, on my channel, I did another poll of how much do you think that this Z06 is gonna lose off of MSRP? A lot of people don't think it's gonna lose any. And some people might think it might dip into the 70s, the 50s here. I'll put the results up for you. But I think that overall, if you the closer you can get to this car to sticker, the more of an investment it's gonna be. Italian auto manufacturers have kind of perfected the um, the way to utilize straight edges with curves. And if you kind of, if you understand what I'm talking about, you can just take a look at the Aventador. Uh, I understand that these cars are obscene amounts of money. I know you're talking a factor of like five or 10 times over the MSRP of the C8 Corvette, but the fact of this car, whenever you see it and you see it next to like a Ferrari or a Lamborghini or, or those other supercars, you can't help but it, and tell me if I'm wrong and tell me if I'm alone on this, but you can't help but feel it's just big flat panels, big boxy flat panels. And that's okay because it is. it starts at $60,000. As far as being able to utilize curves and style and everything, I think that this, I believe this platform has a ways to go. And I think that there's a lot of, uh, for $60,000, the starting price, they're at a really good point. And I believe that the styling of the car, even the rear, I don't think it looks like Camaro. I think people that say that are crazy. It's gonna be a little bit future-proof for years to come. Is it the looker that the Italian supercars are? No, but I'm gonna tell you for the money, I'm definitely gonna go with C8. I believe that this car is gonna be the highest performance per dollar supercar, supercar that America has to currently offer. My dealer has offered me a chance to buy one, put an allocation in for $25,000 over sticker. 
I don't know if it's worth it at this point in time, but I'm gonna hold, I think the smart play might be to hold off and see if that, if I can haggle that 25 down. We'll just have to see what the future holds. So I think if you can get this car at sticker, assuming that this car does cost 90 grand, I think it's gonna be a great buy, especially the one LZ. Uh, I know that if I get a Z06, I'll probably be looking at the one LZ. I think it's gonna have everything that you need. It's gonna be the lightest. It's gonna have the less crap to break on it. I just want a driver's car that I can rip around and that sound, Jesus. In the comment section below, let me know, are you buying a Z06? If you are, what spec are you gonna buy? What price would you go up to? And what are you buying it for? Hope you guys are having an amazing day. Uh, I hope this video finds you well. If this is your first time in, uh, even though it's a Camaro channel, just throw me a subscribe. Check in every once in a while. I greatly appreciate you guys. Give this thing a big thumbs up, support the channel. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. We'll see ya, later.